one of Penny's and my favorite places in this whole world is Scotland. And within Scotland, Mike and I and Mary and Penny, we've visited on several occasions. There is no place more beautiful. There is no place that I feel closer to God than the westernmost islands just off the coast of Scotland. Places like Skye, for instance. You've heard of it, I suppose. We like to hike when we go to Scotland. We like to ramble in the mountains and in the hills. We like to walk along the coast high above the, that blue Atlantic water with those gannets circling and swirling and sweeping into the water and plucking out fish. I feel so close to God when I am there in Scotland, there on those islands. Inevitably, when we hike, inevitably we see sheep. It said, I don't know whether it's true, but it said there are more sheep in Scotland than there are Scots. And I think that's about right. When we hike the mountains, when we hike along the coastline, we often see sheep grazing. They're enjoying that lush green glass, grass on the slopes. And sometimes you'll even see them along that rocky coastline. You'll see them high up in the rocks. You'll see them perched ever so precariously on those rocky crevices or in those crevices. There's often one sheep that is at the highest point. And I often think when I see these sheep, when I see that one solitary sheep, I often wonder how many sheep slip how many sheep step onto what seems like a sound bit of rock only to fall? To fall and to fall and to be crushed on those sharp toothed rocks. And then to be swept away in the waves, lost and forgotten. Today, Jesus tells us a story. It's called a parable. It's a brief story. And it's meant to communicate, it's really meant to speak to our hearts. And the idea is, and Jesus is telling of these parables, is to give his listeners a sense of the presence of God, a sense of the kingdom of God, an experience. And then within the context of that parable to make a decision based on that truth which is revealed. A decision which he hopes will be a decision for life. Today he tells the story of this shepherd. Now, parenthetically, God in particularly the Hebrew scriptures is often depicted as a shepherd of his people Israel. And then, of course, as you might know, in John's Gospel, in particular, uh, one of Jesus' great I am statements is, I am the good shepherd. So God is often conceived of as the good shepherd. In this parable that Jesus tells, there is this shepherd, and he has a flock of 100 sheep. Now, he loves his sheep. He cares about his sheep. He protects them. He would give his life to save his sheep. And he is gathering his sheep together and he is leading them back to the sheepfold. It's the beginning of the end of the afternoon and the light is beginning to, the sun is beginning to sink and as he is walking and there at the sheepfold as they go in, he's counting them. And he notices one is missing. 
he leaves the 99 sheep there. And he goes in search of this one lost sheep. That lost sheep is as precious to him as any of the other sheep, as all of the sheep combined. And he knows, this shepherd, that these, this lost sheep, this solitary sheep, is in peril because he is separated from the flock. He is outside the bounds of the sheepfold. And he is at risk. He is at risk maybe of starving to death. He's at risk of being seized upon and savaged by wolves. He's at risk of falling from a cliff to his death. And so that shepherd goes out and searches and searches and searches and finally finds that lost sheep. And there that sheep is trembling. And the shepherd reaches out, grabs it up, picks it up into his arms, and he hoists it to his shoulders, and he carries it back to the sheepfold. And as he does, he's rejoicing because this lost sheep has now been found. And the flock is whole. All 100 sheep are gathered in into the presence of that sheepfold with the shepherd there to protect and to provide for those sheep. Jesus tells this parable because of the crowd who are there. And specifically, the scribes and the Pharisees who are grumbling at him because Jesus, Jesus consorts with, if you will. He has fellowship with sinners and tax collectors. These outsiders. These people who are beyond God's salvation, or so the righteous believe. And they grumble at Jesus because he has fellowship with sinners. And he says that he has come to seek and save the lost. And today in that epistle we just heard, we heard St. Paul tell us something of his story. It was either Paul himself or it was a disciple of Paul, inspired by the apostle's example, who tells his story of how he once was one of these lost souls. He was that lost sheep. And he was perched on that precipice above those sharp rocks and those crashing waves. And God in Jesus saved him, saved the Apostle Paul, this blasphemer, this horrible sinner, this rejecter of God, this persecutor, this man of violence. God intervened in his life. God called him to salvation in Jesus the Christ. And Paul, Paul was ready. Paul was in his deep, deepest of being. Paul was ready to be saved from the life he was living. And so he was saved. And so he became a great apostle and a great missionary of the faith. That lost sheep, Saul of Tarsus, was found and became Paul. I myself know what it is to be a lost sheep. Every time I sin, every time I sin, I separate myself from God. Every time I sin, I turn my back on God. And when I am in sin, and if I persist in my sin, I am a lot like Israel in that Old Testament lesson from Jeremiah. There the poet Jeremiah describes what it is like to live separated from God, to live in a state of rebellion and rejection. It is death. The poet describes desolation. 
and describes how all creation is dead. It is a desolation. It is darkness. It is a desert. Nothing grows. Nothing lives. That's what it's like to be separated from God by our sins and to persist in our sins. That's what it's like to be that lost sheep clinging to the rocks, trembling, ready to fall to its death. But thanks be to God, our God is a God who sees us, who knows that we are lost and who seeks us, and who comes to save us in the Good Shepherd, who is Jesus the Christ. Jesus comes into this world, he's, he's vulnerable, he takes on a human body, he suffers, he grieves, he cries. He dies on the cross in order to save me, to save us. That's how much God loves us. That God would send his only son to save us from sin and death. God does not, the scriptures say, God does not desire the death of any sinner, but that we might repent and believe and receive the grace of of salvation and live that fullness of life. I know what it's like to be that lost sheep. The Apostle Paul knows what it's like to be that lost sheep. Might there be something within us? Might each of us in his or her own way be that lost sheep clinging to the rocks, clinging to that, that promontory with unsure footing, ready to fall. Might, might the risen Lord, the living Lord Jesus, be speaking to me today in this gospel, be speaking to each of us in a particular way in this gospel, calling our name, seeking out us, calling us to salvation, calling us to repent of our sins, to turn away from sin and death and to live by acknowledging our sin, confessing our sin, receiving absolution and the grace to live a new life as the Apostle Paul lived a new life because of the grace of God. God does not desire the death of sinners but that all of us might come to him and be saved. Jesus is here for us. He's reaching out to us. He wants to take us into his arms, put us on his shoulders, and take us home. Home to be one with God again. Home to join the rejoicing of all the angels in heaven. Amen.